When Molly Moore from Cambridgeshire was born, she appeared to be just like any other bonnie baby girl. But by the age of six, her life was turned upside down. Molly was born with a rare condition which caused a stroke. She survived, but with serious physical disabilities. For our special report tonight, Anna Todd has been following her remarkable struggle for a normal life. Molly Moore's sixth birthday, exactly one year ago. But later that summer, Molly had a massive brain hemorrhage and a stroke, leaving her unable to move, speak or swallow. The initial prognosis, no one really knew what happened um, and, and how Molly would recover or if she would recover. Um, at one point, um, they, you know, we had a priest come in. We really thought we were losing her. Last Christmas at home in Cambridgeshire, Molly smiled. She laughed. It was a landmark day. The little girl now works full time, making giant steps in her rehabilitation at the Children's Trust in Surrey. Two weeks ago, Molly walked. Wonderful. You're going to push this leg straight. Use those bottom muscles. Stand up tall. Well done. Um, to begin with, um, she was tolerating quite a long session, but she wasn't actually managing to do much movement. The more movement that's coming back, actually, she's getting tired very quickly now. So we're trying to do lots of short sessions with her. So what happened to Molly? As a toddler, she suffered a small stroke. Soon after, she was diagnosed with an extremely rare condition called face syndrome. It's the uncommon association between large infantile birthmarks and defects of the brain, heart, eyes, skin and arteries. Molly's birthmark had been removed long before her diagnosis, the link not made with face syndrome. She lived normally for the next five years. We originally said as long as we can do things with Molly that make her happy and she can you know, tell us that she's enjoying life, then life's still worth living. You know, but if she's lying in a bed and, and not being able to communicate and, and we don't know if she's one, trying to communicate or not, you know, we don't know if she's actually in there or, 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 or not, you know, that's, that's tough. Molly's rehabilitation includes lessons. Just like at school, she does maths and reading and problem solving. Now she's talking again. She even speaks a little French. Hey, well remembered, Miss Molly. That's pretty fantastic. <laughs> Molly sleeps at the Children's Trust during the week. Her mum, dad or grandparents always with her. We want to be able to look back in however many years' time and say, we gave Molly the best chance and we fought to give her the best chance of getting as well as she could. You know, if she can get back to 50% of how she was before, fantastic. But we're not going to settle for 40. We want 50. And if we can get 55, we'll do it, you know, whatever it takes. <laughs> Friday is by far the best day of Molly's week, reunited with Sister Daisy. Next week, the hard work starts all over again. Anna Todd, BBC Look East in Offord Clooney, Cambridgeshire. You won't see a better picture than that, will you? And if you're at all affected by the condition which affects Molly, there is a help group. Their website is at facesyndromecommunity.org. Now, I'm sure most of us know about the disease which has hit honeybees in this region. Now there's a real concern about the future of our hives. This year, the BBC's Spring Watch campaign will focus on the plight of honeybees and the practical steps being taken to help revive colonies. In our region, the BBC's local radio stations are also getting involved. What a glorious thing to be, a healthy grown-up, busy, busy bee, filing away the passing hours, pinching all the pollen from the coffee flowers. Here at Lyveden New Build, Northamptonshire, beekeeper Mark Bradshaw is working hard to keep his bees happy and healthy. to the dear old queen. But that's easier said than done. So what's this one here? So this is one of our existing hives. Uh, we've currently got five hives here at Lyveden. And unfortunately, we lost the colony from this this last winter, probably because it was such a harsh winter. But what I'm going to do, I'm just going to lift this frame off just so you, we can have a look. This sadly is rather a mortuary of, of dead bees we can see here. So can you find out exactly what it was that finished this colony? Well, not exactly. Um, you know, this could have been just because we didn't have enough bees in here to keep warm enough. It's, it's possibly due to the varroa mite though, and the varroa mite um, has wiped out so many of our colonies. 
there are lots of factors thought to be responsible for the country's declining honeybee population. Next door, though, there are some happy honey makers. And you can see how busy the bees are. Apple trees and wildflowers have been planted and encouraged here to make this bee-friendly environment. But there are things you can do in your own back garden. You can go out into your garden centre, pick some really good bee-friendly plants, put them in your garden, put them in your window boxes, put them on your balcony. It doesn't matter how much space you've got, you can always have room for a bee-friendly plant and they'll really thank you for it. We'll be back later in the year to see how these bees are getting on and find out more about the honey harvest. Anita Ramdhari, BBC Look East. And all the details about Be Part Of It are on the Springwatch website at bbc.co.uk forward slash Springwatch. 70 years ago this summer, Britain faced the real threat of invasion across the Channel from the German army. The only thing which stood in the way was the Royal Air Force. What the pilots and the ground crew faced became known as the Battle of Britain. Events marking the 70th anniversary got underway this weekend at the Imperial War Museum at Duxford. It included a flypass by the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight. A Spitfire and a Hurricane launched Duxford's first air show of the season in style, part of a weekend tying in the RAF's proud past with its role today. Though that ash cloud led to one high-profile absentee. Sadly, we've lost the Eurofighter Typhoon flying today because it's based at RAF Coningsley and they, they do have an ash problem there. But actually 99.9% .9 of our programme will be flying as per, so it's going to be a grand afternoon. Honoured guests at the show, the Battle of Britain veterans, many very frail now, but an inspiration. They're a very modest bunch of individuals. However, you know, for us and for the rest of the country, it's very important that, uh, that we recognise what they did for the country um, so that we can live in the way that we do today. The historic Dakota and the Lancaster bomber were also on parade this weekend. My father, he'd been a soldier in the First World War and been in the trenches and had a thoroughly rotten time. And his advice to me was, he said, I don't mind what you do, lad. He said, make damn sure you're riding, not walking. <laughs> but I think when he found out the riding, I had in mind, he wasn't quite so keen. The American Sally B. Flying Fortress joined a celebration of RAF aircraft from 1918 to the present day. For the thousands of spectators, an afternoon to look up and marvel. wonderful pictures by our cameraman Steve Hubbard. Let's get the weather with Jim. Great flying weather as well wasn't it? I bet the bees will have enjoyed that you know that sort of warmth that we have. Uh, today and uh, recent days we've just seen the warmth in the sunshine by day but the nights have been cold. These are the uh, bees at Felbrigg Hall in North Norfolk. Now we are going to get some warm days coming up over the next few days. In fact it's all because I read about a new edition of History of the World which is on